Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and if you've been working with virtual synths and you want to get outside the box and get your hands on your first real hardware synthesizer, there's a lot to consider. So we brought in a few models to compare features. Now, all the models in today's lineup are under $1,000, some way under, actually. But even if you have a bit more to spend, it's worth thinking about why you want a hardware synth in the first place so you can get the features that are most important to you. Hands-on controls, killer sounds, more voices, portability, an onboard sequencer. Let's compare features on these synths and help you decide. Let's start with a very basic question, analog or digital. Generally, digital synths are cheaper as computer chips are less expensive than analog circuits and capacitors. So for example, this digital Waldorf Blofeld module sells for about the same as this analog Roland Studio Electronics SEO2. They both sound amazing, but you can only play a single note at one time on the monophonic SEO2. The Blofeld is capable of 25 notes or voices simultaneously, and it's multi-timbral meaning it can play several different patches or sounds at the same time. In this case, 16. While the analog SEO2 is more limited, but offers a unique, warm, and harmonically rich tone that even the Waldorf's best analog simulations can't quite match. On the other hand, the Blofeld is capable of digital sounds that the SEO2 can't make. Also, don't confuse oscillators and voices. The SEO2 has three VCOs, or voltage-controlled oscillators, but only one voice. So you can detune the oscillators to make chords, but the synth will only respond to one MIDI note at a time. Now, arguably, even more important to a synth's sonic character than the oscillators is the filter, which on the SEO2 is a 24 dB low pass. The Arturia Micro Brood, on the other hand, uses a Steiner Parker filter, while Moogs, like the Sub Fatty, feature their famous ladder filter. The filter simply removes certain frequencies to sculpt the sound. Another significant difference between these two is the amount of hands-on controls. Unlike the Blofeld that uses only a few multifunction knobs to control numerous parameters, the SEO2 offers one-to-one -one control. Every significant sound parameter has a dedicated, although admittedly small, knob on the front panel that you can simply grab and tweak. So if you want to improvise with sculpting the sound live, hands-on control is really important, and for a lot of users, it's the main reason that they want a hardware synth in the first place. The SEO2 is only one of Roland's boutique line of portable synthesizers, it's also the priciest because it's analog, but others in this series offer digital recreations of various vintage Roland synths that sound very, very close to the originals at a fraction of the cost. Now one thing missing on the O2 and the Blofeld are keyboards. You'll have to use a controller keyboard on these. Roland makes the optional K25M keyboard that attaches right to the front of the boutiques and it features smaller keys like a lot of inexpensive synths, including this Arturia Micro Brute, the smallest keyboard synth in today's lineup. This single oscillator plus sub features an overtone control that adds harmonics and an ultra saw to generate fat sawtooth waveforms, while the Steiner Parker filter is variable between high pass, low pass, and band pass modes. But there's no way to store your sound. The Brute Factor adds a little saturation, there's even a 64-step sequencer on board, which like all the sequencers on the hardware synths we're looking at today, can be MIDI synced to the master clock on your DAW. Korg makes a lot of synthesizers with smaller keys, including these three analogs, all of which offer a lot of hands-on control. The Monolog is a very nicely priced mono synth with two oscillators, slimline keys, and a built-in distortion effect. The mini log here costs a little bit more, but gives you four voices, more keys, and a handy, although noisy, tape delay effect. The Korg Arp Odyssey is an almost exact replica of the original classic monophonic wonder from the 1970s, only at 86% of its original size. It does fully conjure up the original's distinctive cutting lead sound, though, enhanced by the overdrive circuit and a duophonic mode capable of two notes at once. Unlike the logs, though, there's no sequencer and you can't save your patches. The Odyssey is also available as a module. The Novation Base Station 2 offers two octaves of full-size keys that respond to both velocity and aftertouch, so you can press down harder as you hold the notes, and that's great in a controller keyboard. 
The Base Station 2 is monophonic with a two oscillator plus sub analog sound engine and features both a sequencer and an arpeggiator. For a bit more money, Moog's Sub Fatty is similar in that it offers a two octave keyboard, but this one is semi-weighted and velocity sensitive, but it doesn't support aftertouch. It's also a two oscillator plus sub mono synth, but that Moog ladder filter that I mentioned gives the sub fatty a more distinctive sonic signature. It delivers that classic Moog sound. Now, except for the Blofeld, we've been looking at analog synths, but the Roland Era System 1 is a four oscillator digital plug out synthesizer with two octaves of full size keys. Roland's plug-out system allows users to change the sound engine to model different synths. So if you get bored with one synthesizer, you can purchase and download a new synth brain without having to buy a new body. Now before we wrap it up, any discussion of first hardware synth options has to include Behringer's DeepMind series. This is the DeepMind 6, a six voice, two oscillator analog synth, and it includes a sequencer, four effects at once, and 37 full size keys with velocity and aftertouch, all at a game changing price point. Feature wise, this and its big brother, the DeepMind 12, probably offer the most bang for the buck on a first synth under $1,000 especially if you want to leverage your first synth as a keyboard controller. The DeepMind is a killer workhorse analog polysynth. The 12 voice version is also available as a module. Again, for this video, we limited our first hardware synth options to relatively inexpensive models that offer a lot of bang for the buck and can be integrated into a computer-based DAW setup quite easily as they all feature USB MIDI ports. So hopefully one of these models will make a great first hardware synth for you, or at least get you thinking about the features that you want in your first hardware synthesizer. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching.